There are times when a player does not look far enough ahead. He works out a combination which wins material or threatens mate, and then to his horror, the combination boomerangs, and the win he counted on turns out to be a loss. Irving Chernev Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a very sharp and double-edged game where we are going to see a boomerang combination. When the white piece is playing Bulgarian chess grandmaster Ivan Cheparinov and his opponent is Czech chess grandmaster David Navara. The game was played in 2007 at European Team Championship. Cheparinov opened up with e4 to which Navara responded with e5. Knight f3, knight c6 and bishop b5. Rui Lopez is on the board. a6, bishop a4. Knight f6, white castled kingside, bishop e7. We are now heading to the closed variations which require a huge theoretical knowledge and can stretch past moves 20 or more. h3, bishop b7, d3, d6, a3 and queen d7. Other popular alternative is knight a5, but in the game we see queen d7. Knight c3, rook e8. Black is freeing the f8 square for the bishop, a standard idea in Rui Lopez. a4, b4, knight e2, and d5, a move which allows black to activate his position. He takes d5, knight takes d5, knight g3, and bishop f8, protecting the pawn on e5. Bishop d2. Well, before this, a5 had been seen in games of Sergei Karyakin and Alexander Grishuk, but in the game we see a novelty bishop d2. Together with other members of Topolov's team of analysts, Cheparinov works very hard on his openings and he delivers a novelty. He's not losing a precious tempo on playing a5 and is allowing black to occupy that square. Our a5 was made with bishop a2, knight d4. By making a pawn sacrifice, Navarra steps into wild complications. White accepted the pawn sacrifice, queen d6, knight f3. Well, a bit passive approach. Queen g4 looks more active, counter-attacking black knight. If rook takes e5, then queen takes d4. But in the game, we see this passive-looking knight f3 move, and rook takes e1 check. Bishop takes e1, and knight f4. With this active position, black has more than enough compensation for the sacrificed pawn. Knight takes d4, queen takes d4, queen g4, rook e8, and knight f5. White is not only attacking black queen, but is also threatening knight h6 check. And it turns out that at this point there is only one move which allows black to save the game. That move is h5, which Navarro made. For example, if you move your queen then this is not good, you are stepping into knight h6 followed by knight takes f7 check, that's why to knight f5 we see h5 answered, black counterattacked, white queen and knight h6 check, white is stepping into a hasty combination and the one who will benefit is black, instead it was better to exchange the queens, in this case we have a quiet and equal ending. But in our game after h5 we see knight h6 check. King h7 is forced otherwise if king h8 then you will lose the pawn on f7 with the check. That's why Navarra played king h7, queen f5 check and king takes h6. At the cost of sacrificing a piece white managed to expose black king but the one who should worry is white. Black king is in safety. Bishop d2 hitting on f4 and bishop d6. Bishop takes f7. This time relying on this pin, white is creating two mating threads. And as we have reached the critical position, please pause the video and try to find black's next move. Let me remove the arrows and leave you with a hard task. Ready? Well, it turns out that in this position there is only one move which allows Black not only to save the game but also retain the advantage and that move is an absolutely staggering Queen takes F2 sacrifice. Look at this beauty, guys. And uh, let's see, but where is Black's compensation? King takes F2, Rook E2 check, King G1. Well, if King F1, then this is simple. Bishop takes g2 can follow and then rook takes d2, the threat is 
knight takes h3, you should give up your queen. In our game after rook e2 check, we see king g1 and rook takes g2 check. An inaccuracy which is allowing white to equalize. In here, rook takes d2 is the winning move. If rook e1, the threat is rook e6 check, then g6, and now if rook e6, then rook takes g2 check, followed by rook g3. The threat is rook f3 check, and then another check with the knight can follow, thus winning the queen. And if queen b5, then, anyways, rook f3 check, and then knight g2 check, followed by rook takes f7. The bishop is untouchable because of the forking threat. Uh, but instead, in our game after king g1, we see rook takes g2 check, king f1, and only now we see rook takes d2. But in this case, by making h4 move, white could equalize the game. It's very important to enable white queen to announce a check from g5. Now if bishop g2 check, then king e1, if rook e2 check, then king d1, and if bishop f3, then already white can give a perpetual check. But instead, after rook takes d2, we have bishop g8, white wants to harass black king further, but that king hunt won't give white anything. Here comes bishop g2 check, king e1, well, if king g1, then knight takes h3 can force white to give up the queen. That's why after bishop g2 check, we see king e1, and rook e2 check, king d1, and bishop f3. The threat is rook e5 check, winning the queen. Queen h7 check, well if you move away your king from the dangerous diagonal, then this time you can lose your rook. In our game after bishop f3 we see queen h7 check, king g5, and rook a2. White is moving away his rook from the dangerous first rank, but even if you try to harass black king further, then this king can march forward and in some cases, black can even use his king as an attacking piece, you know, the king can support the attack. But instead, after king g5, we see rook h2, a chicken move, and rook h2, discovered check. King e1, and by making this beautiful knight d3 sacrifice, black forced the resignation. By making knight d3 check, Navarra opened up the bishop's diagonal. By the way, I have to tell you that in case of playing king c1 again, knight d3 check is winning. And then, once the dark squared bishop is joining the attack, Blake is managing to announce a checkmate. There we have it. After bishop b3, we have a checkmate on the board. In our game, we saw king e1, and after knight d3, white resigned. Whatever you play, if c takes d3 or Queen takes d3 in both cases, bishop g3 check followed by rook h1 is mating. That's why on move 36 we have a resignation. A very, very impressive game. This is what happens when someone is organizing a hasty attack. It can boomerang with a mighty force. Now the one who can find himself in trouble is the attacker. In the end, a chess puzzle for you, where the task is to find that winning line for white. It's white to move, and I will wait for your answers in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.